मीर साहब वैसे जो टाइम है पार्टी टाइम है पर मेंबर्स का वो साढ़े सात मिनट है लेकिन आप बोले शुक्रिया आपका अच्छा जी आई लाइक टू स्टार्ट ऑफ विथ येस्टडे येस्टडे वन बिलीव दैट एवरीथिंग वॉज गोइंग बैक टू नॉर्मल एंड वेन माई चेयरमैन स्पोक the criticism he received was that he spoke in english i mean there is an honorable minister who was beseeching everyone to listen to him and then in a fit calling the opposition cowards such is the mental level of ministers uh then i'll go on to something which i came across in the newspapers yesterday that the pti government is going to name a road in islamabad after ahmed shah masood the reply they got from cda was that roads can only be named after heads of state so they were going to look and see how they can name a road on his name for people who i think most people know ahmed shah masood or for the ones who don't he was uh, part of the mujahideen an expert guerrilla fighter supported by pakistan in for the initial years of the afghan jihad and then turned against pakistan he then made relationships with india raw was very active and this is all part of history it is nothing to hide and till his dying day he remained anti pakistan so much so that his heir amrullah saleh was headed the afghan secret service and also was minister of interior to this day is volubly anti pakistan so i like to ask this government why are you putting the name of somebody who's anti pakistan on islamabad road there is no mulla umar road in islamabad he was a head of state if you want to name a road after the head of state of afghanistan go ahead for whatever the taliban rule may have been Mullah Umar was a friend of Pakistan to the last and he also in the history of nations his name will be written in gold letters because he chose principle over submission and not many have done that so i don't know what this foolish government is why this foolish government is doing it but if they do it i doubt many people will support them in this gesture i'm sorry it is not it is not unparliamentary foolish is not unparliamentary by any standard if you look up how the british house of commons works it is not unparliamentary sir and then i don't know i mean we hear of covid how this government has gone and control covid how this government is an example abroad people are asking them how did you control covid well sir as everybody sitting here knows and has seen it it is just by the grace of allah almighty that covid has not taken a heavy toll here as it has in many countries in fact people scientists are at a loss they know exactly how things have happened here they know exactly the the what the government has uh, done and they know that it is not the government
Also, may I have your attention, Madam Chairman? I'm speaking kindly. Give me your attention rather than everybody else sitting there. And also, I can't understand why this government all the time comes up with the fact that we are going to have the state of Medina. I think perhaps it is out of ignorance. Do they even know what the state of Medina was? It was something which was ordained by Allah and created by our Prophet and never shall it be created again. I mean, they carry on using these words for propaganda. This is, pro this is provoking Allah that we will create a state of Medina. If a state of Medina were to be created by Muslims, again, it would already have been created. And in my study of Islamic history, I have not come across any single sovereign king, president, prime minister, who has claimed that he has made the state of Medina or is going to make the state of Medina. So I don't know why all these words are bandied about without fear of the Almighty. I'll now go on to, to the budget. And I agree with my colleague Mohsen Dawar that the pie is too small. So many of the pieces go away that very little is left for us to really discuss. Mainly it goes on defense, on repayment of loans or interest, and on salaries. And we are left with around 30% or so, or 25% to play around with. But whatever it is, it is, it is there. Of course, the government says it's wonderful. We look at things and say the opposite in many ways. But one thing I cannot understand is just before the budget, the finance minister was relieved, and then came the 3.9% uh, GDP. Could it be that the finance minister was relieved because he was not willing to go, go along with this 3.9? No answer has been given on that as to what hap whatever happened. But as everybody knows, economic uh, resurgence doesn't take place overnight. It takes time, months, to, for it to uh, resurge and come back up. And all other indicators also say that there is a resurgence. Unfortunately, all other indi indicators don't say that. But nevertheless, this is the only figure we have, so we stay with this figure of 3.9%. But in that 3.9%, uh, again, my learned colleague, Kasim Noon, mentioned agriculture. I'm sorry to say that on paper it's 12 billion for agriculture, whereas in actual uh, terms, it will be seven billion. The rest will go on salaries, etc., etc., etc. Only seven billion is left, which translates into 44 million dollars. 44 million dollars for an agricultural country like Pakistan. What will 44 million dollars do? Nothing. Therefore. I ask that this be, the 12 billion be raised 10 times to 120 billion if the government is, if the government is sincere in its effort to promote agriculture and thereby promote exports from this country. I also go on expenditure, for example, in the previous budget, I was in the cabinet committee and I was seeing the SDGs 
which, uh, for which money was spent. And unfortunately, except for one district, which is below 70% poverty, it was all spent on districts in Sindh, which were much more prosperous. But I have nothing against that. All I say is give more to the districts which have less. Again, I'll go on to some schemes, which is uh, PSDP schemes for Sindh. 2017-18, it was 27 schemes. 2018-19, 22, 19-20, 13, 20-21, 10, and proposed in 21-22, six schemes. I think this is a matter of record, and it clearly shows how much money is of uh, share of the PSDP is going to send. And we have two very, very important projects. One is the Hyderabad Sakhar motorway. So many motorways have been built on routes which have less priority than this. This route has the highest priority. And who suffers? Pakistan suffers. This route has uh, transport all the way back from Peshawar uh, to Karachi. And this one stretch of road in between is uh, maneuvered by transport from all over Pakistan. And this has the highest ratio of transport. So who is suffering? It is the nation which is suffering by this crass, criminal, criminal way of not prioritizing this and going elsewhere uh, on low priority roads and making motorways there. I would put forward that this be completed at any cost. Uh, sorry, I have a couple of things. I'll just uh, finish it. Second is this Hyderabad Larkana. Ji, please highway. wind up, Karim. I think it's 12 minutes. Okay, ji. ji, thank you. I'll just uh, uh, wind up in a couple of minutes. Uh, there's the Hyderabad Larkana Highway, for which Sindh government has paid its 50% share, but is not being completed. That is the second artery, which connects us to Baluchistan and all the way to KPK. And this must also be completed now with giving it the highest priority. Uh, a few things about uh, my constituency. Uh, we have gas and oil fields. And SSGC is now, after the court judgment, which is being implemented, providing gas in uh, a five kilometer radius. But unfortunately, what they've done is instead of the whole district, only half the district, which is, again, a constituency of an honorable minister is being provided the gas, and the other half of that same district is not. I insist that the same prerogative be given to every uh, person in the district who comes under that purview of five uh, kilometer gas. And uh, Wind up, Kariji. Ji. Tera minute, okay. Thank you. In the, uh, in the end, I'll just say that this is my first time. Uh, I came here a lot, came here to learn, to see the parliament of Pakistan, how it functions, what happens. It has the you know, it, 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 has, it has 22, uh, 220 million people uh, for which it provides laws. I must say in these three years I've been sorely disappointed. And uh, frankly speaking, it is with a lot of hesitation that I do come here. Thank you. Thank you. Janaab Fazal